Travis Scott is not the first rapper to receive a fast food meal in his name. Did you know that Paperboy's secret lemon pepper wet order at Junior Crickets was added to the menu after its inclusion into Atlanta? The Atlanta featured within the show is so much more than what showrunner Donald Glover and series director Hiro Mirai puts on the screen. The writing of the series features so many wonderful references, callbacks, and easter eggs that it's easy to have missed some as we watch Donald Glover trying to earn some paper. Boy! As we excitedly await for season 3 to begin production, let's take a flight on over to revisit Atlanta. Some may be surprised to hear that Brian Tyree Henry, aside from appearing in almost every film released these past few years, also once had a starring role in a musical. Brian originated the role of General Butt <laughs> Naked in South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker's Book of Mormon. Knowing this now, it may be surprising that Paperboy's vocals aren't actually his. Instead, the executive producer Stephen Glover, who does sound quite a bit like his brother Donald. Remember those cozy satin pajamas from TLC's Creep music video? Maybe not, but costume designer Tiffany Hasborn did. The colorful and luxurious satin jammies worn by the crew was a direct reference to the R&B trio, who, you may have guessed, are from Atlanta. I mean, look at those pajamas. So soft, so luxurious. There is something beautiful about the ending of Rocky 3. We see Apollo and Rocky in the ring preparing for an official rematch. The odds could be in either party's favor as the two boxing juggernauts spend the entire film training with one another. All of the film leads up to the moment as the two call for their epic second rematch to begin. The two begin to square up, the bell rings, and the frame pauses, zooming in before Eye of the Tiger starts rocking just in time for the credits to roll. It is exhilarating and keeps fans wondering what possibly happened once the credits begun. In one of Atlanta's oddest cameos, a down on his luck urn, who having repeatedly lost for the entire episode of Money Bay, Shoddy decides to make a final effort to step up to his new life he's about to lead with Paperboy. He somehow gains the opportunity to race former Atlanta Falcons QB, uh, among other things, Michael Vick. Just as the race is about to begin, the frame freezes, slightly panning in as the music swells up akin to the iconic ending featured in Rocky 3. Except this version doesn't make us wait till the spin off film to tell us who wins the fight. It's Michael Vick. Hiro Mirai has stated that one of the aspects of shooting Teddy was by cascading him around the darkness of his surroundings, appearing as a ghastly figure floating in the sea of the frame until he stands up, allowing Teddy's terrifying presence to grow. Fans of The Exorcist may recall this technique being used to create the nightmare-inducing Pazazu. As we stare off into the horribly dead eyes of Teddy, it should be noted that Lakeith was the only one on set who didn't know that Donald Glover was performing in the role. It's hard not to love Kanye West, what with his genius and subtle lyrics such as Poop diddy scoop, scoop diddy whoop, scoop. It is completely understandable that fellow artists would want to be inspired by the rapper turned clothing salesman's career. The creative team has stated that each season of Atlanta is considered to be like each sequential album in Kanye's career. The college dropout could be considered to be like season one as both Earn and Kanye throw away their traditional lives to follow their dreams within the arts while surviving near-death experiences. Atlanta's Robin season contains the same eat or be eaten mentality that Kanye's sophomore album follows. Kanye added film composer John Bryan to his production team on late registration, a move that allowed the album to experiment with different genres, an homage to what Robin season did with its incredibly varied slate of episodes between the comedy of Bibby and the horror of Teddy Perkins. Season 2 introduces Clark County, a rapper that, while undeniably talented, is a pawn of the marketing department. If you were a fan of the rapper, there's a chance you may have noticed his style parodies to a certain someone. But that's not all. Clark County is responsible for the infamous YooHoo advertisement. A song so catchy, most people don't listen to the lyrics. But they should, because it's not just about the pleasures of conformity and the importance of trends, it's also a personal statement about the industry itself. The YooHoo ad targets more than just chance though. Artists like Lil Yachty have been criticized for switching up demographics for a more family-friendly approach as a quick means of cashing out on themselves. 
The works of critically acclaimed comedian turned director Jordan Peele are referenced several times throughout the series. This shot is reminiscent of blocking scene in Get Out, while Bibby references their failed cat flick Keanu. The most jarring reference to Get Out appears in Teddy Perkins, when Darius walks into a room and Teddy takes a flash photo of him. Darius whispers he isn't a photo person, and calls back to his character Logan King in Get Out, where a flash photo breaks him out of his whitewashed trance. We want to remind you of a cameo back in 2016 that you may have offset from your mind. Before their culture trilogy, the Atlanta natives Migos appears the drug dealers that Al and Darius find in the woods. We the Migos. Yeah, the faux Migos. In typical Atlanta fashion, right from the get-go, we learn that the parallels between our world and the world of the show are always strange. We especially learn that in the woods of Atlanta, things are not always as they seem. Oh, Larry David, a king amongst men, a hero of entertainment, a legend for the ages. It's hard not to love that. Eh, I'll take whatever works attitude Larry exudes. Donald Glover has stated that he wants his show to be like Curb Your Enthusiasm, but with rappers. This parallel is all about showing how awkward it is to be perceived as famous when really we just want to be average Joes in the public eye. This is a topic that presents itself in full during the Al-centric episode of The Woods. The Larry David connection does not stop there. Fans of his little tiny other show about nothing may notice parallels between each of the series squads. Ern and Jerry are both the audience's eye into a world of peculiar situations and even odder characters. Paperboy, like George Costanza, is the main character's closest ally, working hand in hand with them to achieve their dreams with the arts. Darius is just classic Kramer, living off the vibe. Vanessa comes in as Elaine, former lover of the main character who is now stuck dealing with the main character's antics. There is something a little soulless about seeing an artist having to perform their heart out in front of a board of executives who really don't get what you do. Record labels could very well just listen to your mixtape. That is, if they have the proper equipment. But sometimes, individuals are forced to endure the power dynamic in selling themselves to the big wigs of a company. Robin Season's Sport and Waves features a quick cut of a young performer doing just that. And if you haven't already figured out, that is something that Bobby Shmurda made headlines in doing at the offices of Epic Records. Atlanta is one of those few shows on television so strange yet brilliant where an episode begins with having someone innocuously flexing their invisible car. That shit ain't real, man. And then ending, calling back to that very same invisible car, but performing a hit and run. Robin season in Atlanta is quite literally Robin season in Atlanta. The time of the year that the season is set is referred to as Robin season as it's when the crime rates in Atlanta spike pre-holidays. Everybody gotta eat. That being said, every episode contains a robbery. Let's hit it. Episode 1, the drive through robbery. Episode 2, Tracy robs the shoe store. Episode 3, Ern is robbed by the strip club. Episode 4, Vanessa has her phone stolen. Episode 5, Bibby steals the entire day from Paperboy. Oh, you got somewhere to be? Yeah. Episode 6, Teddy Perkins has his youth stolen from him. Episode 7, Vanessa was robbed of an appearance from Drake. Episode 8, Al is robbed by his fans. Episode 9, Tracy steals a flintlock from the frat house. Episode 10, Devin's fubu swag is stolen. Episode 11, Luke has his career stolen. The Woods. This episode of the series shows Al at his lowest. Through a series of unfortunate events, Al ends up getting pretty deep, both physically and metaphorically. A beautiful helicopter pan out is used for this shot and it elicits the shining vibes. Both shots are using nature's epic scale to illustrate just how far away from normality that the lead characters of both series are. While the episode itself primarily focuses on Al having to decide between keeping it real versus making a change and living a new life of a semi-famous rapper, the episode's writer Stephanie Robinson has stated that Al's grief is tied towards actor Brian Tyree Henry's own mother passing. With the woods demonstrating the weighty load put on an individual when they were forced to face the world without their compass. Another stylistic inspiration for the series is Twin Peaks creator David Lynch. Lynch is most notable for his surrealistic approach to film where reality is heightened and surroundings are bizarre. Needless to say, the show's most critically acclaimed episode Teddy Perkins is the embodiment of that idea. Originally airing like a film with no commercial interruptions in its broadcast, Teddy Perkins is horrifying and draws many allusions to other horror films. Misery is a Stephen King classic whose plot is closely paralleled throughout the episode Teddy Perkins. Both works contain an unexpected participant stumbling into the halls of a mad person, only to become trapped and forced into an insane scheme. 
In a behind-the-scenes video, director Hiro Mirai furthers this connection to Misery by pointing out that Darius's jacket and shirt are designed to be reminiscent of what James Caan wears in the film. In the lemon pepper wet scene, eagle-eyed fans may have noticed a certain television talk show playing in the background, this being Montague, a television talk show in the Atlanta-verse which doesn't get formally introduced until the seventh episode of season one radically shifts the television series format to follow, well, another television series format. That being a parody of public access television that one would find on their own local cable. The format follows in the footsteps of other public access satires, such as Tim and Eric, through some of its strange and unusual sketches throughout, such as the Quest commercial. Hi, my name is Ma White. You may know me from your dreams. Which features some laughably bad green screen. Fans of Atlanta may have been surprised when Lakeith Stanfield guest co-hosted the Eric Andre show this season. Rest in peace, Hannibal. But that wasn't the first time Atlanta and the Eric Andre show crossed paths. The theme song to Montague, entitled Oregon Trail, is the same jingle used in the other public access satire. You could say tricks are for kids, but we all know the tricks rabbit shouldn't be within 50 feet of children. The Coconut Crunchos ad and ban flips that script, scathingly critiquing police brutality by presenting the mascot as an innocent fan of cereal. The skit displays the kids recording the event in horror as abuse of power happens. The episode was recorded in 2016 and unfortunately as time has gone on, the skit has only become more and more relevant. This isn't the first time the advertisement airs. In fact, in the previous episode, you can spot the ad playing in the background. The name Montague is in reference to the family from Romeo and Juliet. The Montague family was notorious for always playing the middle ground and avoiding fights even when they wanted to bite their thumb at another family. We are really sorry that we had to bring you back to English class there, so we'll give you a bonus reference. The character of Montague is very heavily based on CNN correspondent Don Lemon. Don Lemon has been criticized in the past for having some not great takes and some pretty awkward run-ins with rappers on air. While Donald Glover's alternate persona of Childish Gambino is never fully featured in the show, moments do reference his works. Season 2 episode 1 opens with a robbery of Miss Winners, a moment inspired by a lyric on his album Camp from the song Outside, with the lyrics being, Mama worked at Miss Winners, gun pulled out her face, she still made dinner. At the music studio offices, Ern and Al meet an executive named Peter Savage, who says his colleagues call him 35 Savage. Of course, this is a not-so-subtle reference to rapper 21 Savage. Since the episode's airing, Gambino and 21 Savage have collaborated twice. 21 Savage's song, Monster, is one of the only times Childish Gambino has featured on a track, while 21 is on the features list of Gambino's most recent project. So here we have a series that centers on topics such as rapping, murder, brotherhood, and drugs, just to name a few. What would be a good inspiration for such a show? Well, I don't know, how about Tiny Toon Adventures? No, no, I I'm being serious, what about Tiny Toon Adventures? During the release of season two, executive producers Steven and Donald Glover had this to say about Tiny Toon Adventures. If you watched them all together, they were a movie. We kind of took that idea of the whole story, but being told in a bunch of little parts, that could be a show. I guess we can call that fact a Looney Tune. <laughs> we'll move on. In the first episode of season one, we see Ern in a job that he absolutely can't stand as a rewards card salesman. Ern is seen standing around all day, being completely ignored by the general population. Of course, that is not the case for long as he quickly becomes Paperboy's manager. At the end of season two, when Paperboy's career is finally taking off and the crew is flying to London, a quick shot showcases just how much Ern has changed in his new life. He completely ignores the reward card salesman when he goes to the airport. This little detail just furthers the eat or be eaten mentality seen in Robin's season. Every moment of this series is seemingly two steps ahead, including casting of certain characters. Devian Johnson appears in the aforementioned episode as a self-proclaimed famous movie star, promoting Swisher Sweets. This is not the only time the actor appears. In season two's Champagne Poppy, Devian reappears as a smooth-talking actor, trying to pick up some Swisher Sweeties. I just love Devian. I love him too! You go Devian, you little scoundrel. All right, so here we are, the final reference. For this one, we need to travel back to 2016 with the episode Juneteenth. In the episode, we enter Craig Allen's office, which is filled with many artifacts, including an album from the same year that is cognate to Atlanta. Of course, this is the cover to Awaken My Love, 
an album which Childish Gambino released later on that year. Fans were ecstatic to have the first look at the Childish Gambino album, signaling a renaissance from Donald Glover with his TV show and album coming in the same year. Little did us fans know that there would still be two years between this project and his next project, season two. With Atlanta season three and four filming back to back in the upcoming year, we can only imagine what's to come for Atlanta. 2020 has been right full of political and cultural occurrences that Donald Glover's world would have a field day in covering, showing both the horror and humor and humanity. Here at Screen Rant, we love Joker and would appreciate a reference from Zazie Beetz's Vanessa to the film.